Hey guys, Akil Mohideen here and welcome back to another video. Today we're continuing on with the CPU project and today I kind of wanted to show a way in which we could get all the computer components to work together. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating, I guess, a little function that we're going to do which is just going to be constantly adding one to a number. So you're going to start out with one plus zero and then that's going to give you one, then you're going to add one to that, so you're going to get two, then add one to that, you get three, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can kind of see where this is going. Anyways, so for that, we're going to use both of the registers as well as the ALU. So we're kind of bringing all the components together. Now, unfortunately, we haven't gone over instruction sets yet and CPU layout and... Uh, design and things like that which is all going to be needed to create this program if we wanted to do it legitimately like we wanted it to legitimately be like a program that you would normally see in a, in a, a normal CPU like how a normal CPU would run this sort of program but I'm not going to do that that way because we're not that far along yet so what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat uh, a lot <laughs> cheat we'll cheat a little bit but so for the ALU, we first need to go over some things. So before, we had the ALU, right? And now we know that everything's going to connect up to the bus. We already discussed this, I think it was the last video maybe, how everything's going to connect up to the bus. But the problem is with the ALU that I didn't talk about earlier when we went over how to make an ALU, which was like one of the first videos in the project. We did the ALU first. but. Since we hadn't gone over the bus, I didn't think it was important yet, and I didn't want to confuse you guys, so now I'm going to talk about it. But it's important that you understand that everything that's connected to the bus goes through a frame, a tri-state, a tri-state buffer. Okay, which I'm just going to call buffer for now. And I already talked about how to use this buffer in the last video, but here we go. So the ALU is going to go through, and it's going to send all eight of its values and I expanded the ALU from 4 to 8 in case you were wondering so let's just say that's 8 lines if it is great but if it's not who cares so the ALU is going to send all of its values into the buffer and then we're going to have a little switch here that says whether we want to push or not okay and then if it does push then we go ahead and push all these values now I'm the drawing is pretty bad because I don't really care about the drawing anymore you guys should already understand this concept from the last video if you don't understand it yet then I would recommend going back to the last video and uh, seeing how we're talking about how we're gonna implement everything into the bus so basically we're gonna say ALU is going to load the value. It's going to say, you know, it's going to add A plus B. And then it's going to send whatever A plus B is, the answer C, into this tri-state buffer. But the buffer is going to keep it here, essentially, and not put it on the bus. This way, the, this way whatever data is on the bus is not inflicted by the ALU. So the buffer is going to keep it so that this way, on the bus, there's neither a 1 or a 0 coming from the ALU. It's going to be in this ungrounded state, a floating state, they say. And... Once we say push, it's going to take whatever values in the ALU and it's going to let it pass through the buffer onto the bus. Okay, now we talked about it in this last video, but I just want to make sure that you're using a buffer in, in between the ALU and the bus. Because originally when I made it, I didn't, I forgot about that, and then I ended up having to redo it. Okay, and I wasted a lot of time. So I just want to make sure that you guys are going ALU to buffer to bus. And with all the other things that we're going to implement with the CPU, Everything goes from whatever component it is to buffer to bus. Whatever it is to buffer to bus, okay? Always, always going through a buffer. So, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about what we're trying to do. So the ALU has two, has an A value and a B value and then a C value. So, we're always adding 1. So, we're going to set one of these ALU values always to 1. So, let's just say it's B. So, that's going to go automatically into 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, that's 3, 6, 7, 
8. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, so B is always going to be this. And I did that by just saying one of the registers I have is just going to hold the value 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then it's going to whatever the ALU is, wherever the input for the B is on the ALU is just going to go straight to that register. Then A is going to be connected up to C, which I know sounds strange, but think about it. Okay? So you add one, okay? So you have originally there's zero here and there's one here. So there's one now here. Now one is going to have to come here back into the ALU, one plus one, two. Two plus one, three. Okay? So that's how we want to do it. But the problem is, you know, the ALU calculates basically if, you know, the voltage is constant for the ALU, then essentially it's going to calculate at the maximum speed of the ALU, which I don't know exactly what that is for this chip, but we don't want to do that because then basically to our eyes it's going to go from 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 as before we even see anything. So what we want to do is have this come to the bus, the C, come to a bus originally, okay, let's just call that the bus, and then A is connected to the bus, okay, and then we have the little switch on the register A that we created in the last video that says whether we want to load from the bus, okay, then once we load, the value will go into A and then it'll calculate and then we can load again and calculate this way every single time it basically press the load button on A register it's going to plus one to the value and then it press again it will plus one to the value every single time so this is kind of a basic drawing so let's kind of do more of an in-depth drawing what you're going to have is normally in a CPU is you would say this already has a zero in register A and register B has a one whatever's in register B is not changing so we're going to push the contents of register A onto the bus the ALU is going to load the contents of the bus into A, and then it's going to hold the output. It's not yet going to output the output onto the bus, but it will output the output once we say push onto the bus. Then whatever the contents is of 1 plus 0, which is 1, will be on the bus. So 1 is now on the bus. So then you say load whatever is on the bus in register A. So now in register A you have a 1, and then you're going to say push the contents of register A onto the bus. You're going to say ALU load the contents of the bus into the A, and then it's going to calculate. It's going to have a 2 now, and then you're going to say push the value 2 onto the bus. And then you're going to say load that load the value of the bus into register A, and then you're going to push it again, and you're going to see how this is going to go on and on forever, and we're basically just adding one every single time. This is how you would normally do it in a CPU. Now you do that in an instruction set, which I will go over in a much, much later video, hopefully a much later video. And it's a more roundabout way, but it's the more correct way to do things. It is, especially since you have Right now we only have two registers, so you can see how this is going to be, how that's inefficient for two registers. And it is, you're completely right. For two registers, it is in inefficient, inefficient. But when you have like four gigabytes of RAM, or t eight, or twelve, or even six megabytes of cache, which is a lot of cache in the CPU, then it becomes necessary to do this, and we'll explain why that is later. But for now, I don't have instruction set and I'm not going to create I'm not going to go over how to create instruction set just to put it together this little demo for you so I'm going to cheat and here's how we cheated so uh, go ahead and remember this or pause the video because we're erasing it now okay so what we did is we basically forgot about the whole push system now, if you remember, register A is tied down for the frame buffer, okay? This way I can always see what the content of register A is without having to output it onto the bus, which is good for troubleshooting. But it's also good because now I can manipulate the value of register A whenever I want. I don't have to go through the bus to use register A's value. Okay, because it's always, always outputting the value of register A, but that's going into a frame buffer. But basically, it's always readable. Okay, For, from my point of view, 
it's always readable. I can always just connect a wire up there and know what the value of register A is, right? Because remember, I have those LEDs across the side. That'll show you. I have those LEDs that always show what's the value of register A. So I can just take wires from those LEDs and now I have the value of register A on those wires. So, I take the value of register A and I put it straight in here. No going through the bus. So now the only thing that happens and also I got rid of this push. Okay? And I also got rid of this load. So now A always loading. The ALU is always loading the value that's in register A. The only difference is and we're always outputting the value of register of the ALU. The only difference is we're not always loading the value of the register A. So now let's step through this. 0, 1. The 0 automatically goes in here. 0, 1, 1. 1 is now on the bus. So we have a 1 on the bus and a 0 in register A. I press load. 1 goes from the bus into register A. And that automatically goes in here. Goes plus 1. Goes automatically onto the bus. Now on the bus we have a 2. But in register A we have a 1. Press load again. Now we have 2 in here. 2 plus 1. 3. 3 is on the bus. Press load again. 3 is in here. So you can see how this is going around now. So now every single time I press load we're adding one. Now, I just did this as so I could show you guys how we're using every component. Obviously, this is pretty bad way to do things, but we haven't gone over instruction set or anything yet. So, this is all we've got. So, let's take a look. And it became apparent to me that these LEDs are too bright and they're sh not showing up in the camera correctly. I turned down the ISO in the camera. Hopefully that helps you guys see it a little bit better. But I can see actually just by looking at the screen that it's not helping too much. I'm going to have to get some different LEDs. Actually, these LEDs aren't too good for looking at anyways when I use them for troubleshooting and such. But here you can see it's going through via the clock pulse. I'm going to start it back at zero by clearing the contents of register A with this button. Boom, we're back at one. Two, well, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is how you continuously add by one. Albeit incorrectly, but we're doing it nonetheless. Now, this should be pretty amazing to you guys, you know, how far this project has come that we are automatically adding by one. I'm not doing anything. The CPU itself is adding by one continuously. This is a program that we've built here, okay? We've built a calculator that can calculate indefinitely. I mean, that is until it gets up to here. And then, I'm not really sure what it'll do. It'll keep going, I guess. But. I nonetheless think this is pretty cool. We've been doing this project for a long time, and for those of you who have been building it alongside me, you guys should be pretty proud. For those of you who are just here for the viewing experience, you guys should also be pretty proud. I mean, this is pretty amazing. For those of you who are behind and building it, still, this is what you guys have to get to. Now, we're going to continue on, and I don't know when the next project video is going to come. I won't be able to do a video for the next about two weeks or so. I'm pretty busy, but after that, I will be coming out with some new videos for you guys. So, please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. Other than that, I will catch you guys later.